So in this video, I'm going to show you how to finish off the top of this uh, Christmas ball. Um, but before I do that, once you finish the top, you end up with just 12 stitches at the top. So it gets quite difficult to turn the bauble inside out to do all the finishing. So I'm actually going to do the weaving the ends, what I've done so far before I um, shape the top. So first thing, <coughs> excuse me. First thing I'm going to do is actually close up this hole at the bottom. So I'm going to take the tail, thread it on the sewing needle, and then I'm going to go around and see if I can roughly take my needle in and out of each of the cast on stitches. Doesn't matter if you don't catch all of them. But basically just want to go in and out through the cast on edge. So I'm going, I haven't actually counted how many loops I've gone in and out of, but I'm just kind of catching the um, strands around the cast on edge. I don't know whether my camera focused on that, but I've just gone around the edge and threaded the yarn through. And then pull that tight so it closes up. Now it's a little bit of a gap here, so I'm just gonna go across like that to close up that gap. That's better. And then I've got a needle with a very big eye. I don't know if you can see it. Which I really like, but it means the yarn falls out quite easily. Okay, and then I'm going to take the yarn through to the inside. I'm going to turn the knitting inside out. And then I'm going to weave in this end. So you can leave this till the end, but because you've only got 12 stitches, it's really fiddly. So I do recommend that you do all this before you shape the top. So what I did was I did the colour work and then I um, knitted one round. So I knitted the first round of the um, shape the top section. Um, just because it's easier to do weaving the ends for the colour work after I've knitted a row. So I'm just, just going to weave in this end a little bit. There we go. That'll do. So trim back on. And then I'm going to weave in that end. So that's the one for where I joined in the colour work. I tend to just pick a row of stitches and then just weave in a few stitches one way and then just go back a few stitches. So I may I only went and did like four stitches because this is um gonna be hidden on the inside of this ball. It's not something that I'm gonna see. I think it'll be fine. Um that one off and then I'm also going to do the end of the color the tail from the end of the color work and this is why I actually I've already knitted one row so because to try and weave in the end when you've just finished knitting the final row with that color can be a little bit tricky so what I did was I knitted one round after I finished the color work I might actually because it's a little bit difficult to knit that um weave that in so close to my needle so I'm actually going to knit round two as well so i've already knitted round one of the color work and um, so round one of the shape uh top which in the pattern says continue in c1 um so i've done round one so round two i'm going to knit one then i'm going to do ssk now ssk is a left leaning decrease so i slip on stitch knitwise slip a second stitch knitwise with my left needle into the front of both stitches from the left so i just go into the front like that so my right needle is in the right place to knit with it knit uh then i knit four one two three four knit two together knit one then i repeat that to the end of the round so i'm going to do one more on this needle so knit one ssk slip on knitwise slip a second stitch knitwise slip two stitches knitwise one at a time then I'm going to put my left needle into the front of those two stitches 
and knit them together. Knit four and then knit two together. So I just put my needle into the next two stitches, knit them together. Oops, I split the first of those two stitches and knit one and I'm at the end of the row. Change my needles around. Knit one, SSK. So if you have, if this is the first one of these videos you have found, then there is um, a part one where I show you how to do the start of this uh, Christmas ball and a part two where I show you, one part two where I show you how to do the color work and one where I show you how, where, how to do the um, beads. So if you miss those, go and watch those first. So now I got to the end of the round. I'm actually gonna, so I'll have 24 stitches in total now, 12 on each needle. So I'm gonna turn it inside out again. And then I'm going to weave this end in before I go any further. I'm also going to click my row counter so I don't forget where I am. So I'm just going to weave in this end now. So I'm going to go over this side. Okay. So I want to go like the row below the stitches that are on my needle. So I've just gone a few stitches one way and then I'm just going to go a few stitches the other way. There we go, three stitches I'll do. And then, oh, that's a bit long. Trip, 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 trim that one. I nearly cut the, one of the stitches in my fabric actually there. That would have been a bit of a disaster if I'd cut my fabric. Okay, so we're going to do round... Three. So every other round is just a plain knit round. So I'm just going to knit round three now. Just going to do that fairly quickly. So the link in. Uh, I'll put the link below this video to the actual pattern, which is free at the moment, free in December. 2019. I don't know what I'll do with it after that, but I'll, it may stay free, it may not. I haven't quite decided yet. Probably will stay as a free pattern. So if you come across this, say in December 2020, it might still be a free pattern. Uh, right, so, round four. Knit one. S, S, K. Knit two. Knit two together. Knit one, and knit one, S, S, K, knit two, knit two together, knit one. Knit one, S, S, K, knit two, knit two together, knit one. If I'm going too fast for you, just pause me so you can catch up. I don't want this video to be too long. Okay. So that was round four done. So round five is just a plain knit round. I did have a marker in the side there to mark the beginning of my round, but I took it out. And I probably should have left it until I finished this shaping. But I can see when I look at my stitches, I can see that I decreased on the previous round, so it's okay. Okay, so let me just finish this round. That's round five down, round six. So three more rounds to go. So round six is knit one, SSK, knit two together, Knit one, that I reduced up to four stitches. Knit one, SSK, knit two together, knit one. Oops, 
in the that last one. I dropped it instead. There we go. So that's eight stitches left on that needle. So I'm reducing by eight stitches on every row, except for the final row. SSK, knit two together, knit one, knit one, SSK, knit two together, knit one. There we go. Round six done, round seven is plain round, and then round eight is the final decrease round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches on that needle. And eight stitches on the other needle. So that's round seven. So now we're going to do round eight. Knit one, knit two together, knit one. So we're going from four stitches down to three stitches. So knit one, knit two together, knit one. Now you don't want the top to be too tiny. So you might be thinking, well, why am I not going all the way down to eight stitches? Because we started with eight. And it's just because it makes it a little bit too tiny at the top. It makes the hole that I've got to put the stuffing through just too small. Hang on. I forgot to nip on there. Knit two together. Nip one. So if I went down to all the way down to eight stitches, it would just be very, very difficult to get the stuffing through. So that's row number eight. So that's it. Now, I'm not going to leave too long a tail. You can crochet... Um, I'm not going to show you how to do this, but you can crochet a little loop to hang these up with. I'm actually going to get some ribbon because I think that looks nicer. And it's actually what I did last year. So now to finish this off, we're going to use our sewing needle again. Thread the yarn on. And then we're going to just thread all the stitches onto this yarn. So working yarn is coming from the back needle. And we're going into the first stitch on the front needle and take it off. So just so make sure you're going, you're carrying on in the direction you were knitting in. If you went into that stitch of the working yarns coming out there, you'd be going backwards and you'd unpick. It'd be a little bit awkward. So turn my needles around, slide those stitches onto the needle tip. Two, four, six. There we go. Now before we stuff it, I we're going to... Uh, steam it slightly so I do think that the um, all color work knitting stranded color work um, looks better if you block it but it's not very easy to block these um, the only way you can block them really is by putting something inside them like a ball inside them but it's unless you have an inflatable ball that'd be difficult and just stuffing it with the toy stuffing isn't enough to um, to block it so what i've done is i've got my steam iron ready here it's been heating up while i've been recording this so i'm going to just put it down the table um i've got a steam iron with a steam button so i'm just going to hold it i'm not touching it i'm just like holding it over as close as i can to the fabric without pressing down the lid i'm just going to press the steam button a few times and then I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing. So I'm touching it, not touching it. I'm just going as close as I can. I'm pressing loads of steam into the fabric. And then I'm going to just put my fingers inside, give it a good stretch. And then do the stretch that way. Do the stretch that way. There we go. And it does, it's not as good as pinning it out, steaming or wetting it and leaving it to dry. But it is... It will just even out your stitches a little bit. There we go. So I'm a bit happier with that. So I'm going to just move my iron out of the way. Um, now I would normally, I've got water from the steam on my table now. Um, now I would normally leave this to dry before I stuff it. But because I want to finish this video, I'm going to stuff it. So I'm using this. I'm trying to show you this stuff. 
is called Tremets Super Soft Toy and Cushion Filling. Uh, it's polyester. In the past, I've used um, spinning fibre. So I had a load of just pure marina spinning fibre, which I've used. But I've run out of that. Um, marina spinning fibre might be a little bit expensive to use for this. But um, I just got this last year um, from a local craft shop. Anything that you have, if you've got an old cushion that you want to get rid of, you could use the stuffing for that, I guess. I don't know, whatever you want to use. Um, but if you've got a lot of spinning fibre, um, then that would be ideal. So I'm just stuffing this in. I'm just breaking off little pieces because I've found that it's better if you like break off little pieces and stuff it in rather than just like pick up a big piece and shove it in. P picking off a little pieces and stuffing it in. And you want to really push it down to see how much more room you've got. You want to make sure you stuff it fairly full. You don't want to understuff it because then it tends to end up a little bit of an odd shape. So I found stuffing it, you know, properly full gives me a better shape. I must admit, I don't particularly like this stuffing. It's a little bit kind of uneven, um, but it was cheap. <laughs> so that's probably why. Um, okay, so that's probably enough. There we go. And then I'm going to make sure that stuffing stays inside. And then I'm going to just pull the working yarn till that closes up. And then I'm just going to like check that I've stuffed it enough. I feel like I could probably fit a little bit more in. So I'm just going to try and open it up again. And just put a little tiny bit more in. There we go. Pull that tight. Then get my sewing needle. Now, if you um, so to make sure that stays closed up. I want to, I'm just going to check which way the yarn's coming. So the yarn's coming, okay. The yarn's coming from that direction. So I want to try, I'm going to go through the stitches, which I can see on here. Remember, you can see it on camera. I'm going to just try and go through the stitches again. So you want to try and go in the direction you were going in before. So that, I think that's right. You don't want to go back through the stitches you've already been through, because then you'll be undoing this. So I just want to go through... I don't have to go all the way around, but some of those stitches again like that. Make sure it's close up tight. And then what I tend to do is I tend to just go under so from one end of that hole to the other. Just under the fabric. And then I just kind of go it's one little half a stitch over to the over to one side and I go under again. Because obviously you can't weave in the end properly at the back because you can't get there. So that's all I do. Now, if I was going to crochet, I haven't actually got a crochet hook here, but I'll just show you. I'm just going to find, I've got a little tiny hook like this, which I just use for um, picking up drop stitches. But if I was going to use this to crochet a little loop, what I would do is instead of trying to tie a slip knot in there, so I found that then you end up with like a little bit at the bottom. That's just, um, on, you know, the yarn and then, I don't know, it just doesn't look before the crochet start. So what I tend to do if I'm going to crochet it is I tend to go through like, hang on. Go, how am I going to do this? Yeah, I will go through like that. Wrap the yarn around the needle and pull it through. And then I start crocheting from there. So just like chain. Um, stitches like that and I start crocheting from there and um, so you can do that just crochet however long you wanted and then you can just take the end and take it through the fabric again and um, through the bauble again I'm not going to do that what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get some ribbon I'm going shopping tomorrow so I'm going to try and get some ribbon then and then I will or you can just use a bit of yarn or you can crochet a chain or do braid a chain, braid, a little braid or something, and then thread it through. So what I'm going to do before I cut this off, I don't want to cut it off here because I've not woven it in properly. So what I'm going to do is 
just like half a stitch over from where the tail's coming out of the ball. Just going to go straight through the ball to the opposite side, like that. Just push your needle till it comes through. Pull that through. And then I'm just going to push, pull it really tight, push down on the ball, cut it, and then when you let the ball spring back, it buries the end inside. So if I was going to, so say this is a ribbon, or you can just use a piece of yarn, I would just take it through like that and then tie it and then you can hang it from that. So you can either just use a length of yarn or a ribbon. I'm going to see if I can get some nice ribbons, but if not, I will probably just use some grey yarn. So there you go. That's the final bauble. So this is what this set looks like. So we've got a Christmas tree one. I don't find the contrast between the green and the grey that great. So I'm actually going to knit this um, probably in this red colour. So the grey and the red, I think. Um, so we've got the Christmas tree, which is stranded colour work. And then we got this diamond shape pattern, which has also got beads in it. Now you don't have to do the beads if you don't want to. But I quite like the beads. And then we got this one, which is just beaded. This one is a bit smaller. I've got a feeling I maybe I used a smaller needle size on this one because I had some other needles lying around. So this one's just got beads. And this one, and this one's also got beads. This one is a couple of rounds more than that one, but it's the same number of stitches. And I thought I'd use the same number of, uh, same needle size, but this one's a lot bigger. It is two rounds. The beaded section is two rounds longer. Now with these two, if you don't like beads, you could, instead of um, where it says B on the chart, you could use another colour, so you could turn this into a stranded colour work pattern, which I might try and do, actually. Um, I'm not going to offer charts for that, but you can, where it says B, you can just do another colour and then turn it into a stranded colour work pattern. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. I hope you're enjoying making these, and please tag me on Instagram if you share them. Uh, I'll put my Instagram links below, um, and um, I hope you have a lovely Christmas.